With Rashad Bateman going down due to injury, how many receivers will the Ravens end up keeping? Could we see another Hayden Hurst, Mark Andrews situation with Rashad Bateman and Tylen Wallace? One solution to the Ravens' problem with Miles Boykin. These and many, many more on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraving here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subs a series where you can ask me any question about the NFL and we answer it in a video just like this if you want to be part of it you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com uh, or for the patrons you can send it directly on patreon uh, if you want to be become a patreon you can go to patreon.com slash engraving vids uh, but I love y'all team keep it clean I appreciate y'all I'm recording this on August 12th so this may be the final episode of Question from Subscribers you see before the preseason game. <laughs> All right, so you keep it clean. I love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Let's do it. First question came from Nana. She said, hey, Graven, uh, I'm hearing more and more that this player is washed and he hasn't done anything to help his case even in training camp. I believe Eric DaCosta may have picked a dud here while the Steelers are laughing at how bad our Ravens free agents picks are by selecting this guy. Uh, did EDC pick a dud? I believe we need to get rid of him and find someone with talent because Lamar must be protected and there is very little room, if any, for error because Lamar is the one at risk of being badly hurt. What are your thoughts? And she was speaking of of Alejandro Villanueva. Um, now with him, I uh, I haven't really heard anything about him in training camp. I haven't heard too much, but I wouldn't be overly concerned. It may be slightly concerning if you're not hearing anything but bad stuff, um, but I wouldn't be overly concerned until we actually see him playing. If we see him on the field and it's just all out bad, um, then I would be concerned. Uh, but if it's just training camp, then I, I wouldn't get too worried right now. Let's wait till we actually see him uh, in a game first. And then, because if he's playing bad in the game, oh, trust me, Ravens will make the move. They'll, they'll make the move. Let me take him a little bit, but they'll make the move. But I don't expect him to, especially because he's very familiar with his offense because he's just the offense that he ran <laughs> in college. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't be overly concerned with Alejandro. Next question also came from Nana. She said, hey, Graven, uh, while I'm watching Soldier Brown on the field, for the most part, he doesn't play like a first-round draft pick. However, there seems to be a lot of hype about this player amongst other fans. Honestly, for me, he would definitely fall into the overrated player category based on the majority of his season performances. And before the excuses given that he shows up in big games, that doesn't cut it. Failing to play well in the regular season games can very well eliminate us from appearing in playoff and big games. With all this being said, it brings me to the below article, uh, particularly the closing statement. For his sake, he'll have to hope that these new additions and the subsequent changes to his role they'll provide will be enough to earn him one. Uh, on an optimistic note, they, and whatever work he chooses to put in between then and now, will have him well set up to earn it with a big performance in 2021. And that article was titled, uh, Why Marquise Brown is Primed for His Best Season Yet. And she said, what are your fair thoughts on Soldier Brown? So no, with, with Hollywood... Um, I don't think he's overrated. I think he's underutilized. That would be probably the best way I can put it for Hollywood. I think he is extremely underutilized. Uh, his route running is very underappreciated. Um, it does not get used enough. Um, and even last year, last year, he probably should have definitely had over a thousand yards. Um, but I know L Lamar missed him on some big plays. He missed him on some big plays. And Hollywood also had some drops too now. Um, but there were some, some deep throws. Hollywood had his dude beat. And Lamar... Sometimes he overthrew it. Sometimes he underthrew it. Um, so, and, and that's one, one big thing that if they could improve this year, that will really take them to a whole other level, would be improving the deep ball. Ooh, man. And so that got to do with Lamar. It got to do with the offensive line. It got to do with the receivers. It got to do with everybody. But if they can improve that, ooh. And also with play calling, too. And the thing with, with the play calling, and I just did say he's underutilized. Like I said before, when you you mentioned how he shows up in big games, how he shows up in big playoff games, but you're like, but hey, if he don't perform in the regular season, then we can't get to those. But think about this. If he if he was used in the regular season the way that he's used uh, in playoff games, oh boy, I, I don't even think this email would even have been a thought. If they use him like that, ooh, it would be nasty, nasty. But they don't. They, why they don't, I don't know but they don't. 
So Hollywood shows in the biggest games that he's capable of it. He got, he knows, he got it. But it's up to Ravens to use him that way. Next question came from my guy Gareth. He said, Aaron Raven, do you think with Rashad going down with an injury that we might have to keep at least seven wide receivers? Because we have a couple of players that may not be ready week one. I hope I'm wrong and will love your input. Thanks for everything you do. And shout out to Team Keep It Clean. Appreciate it, Gareth. Um, it could force them to do that uh, because th this is exactly what I didn't want to happen. I did not want the roster decisions to be made based off of injury um, because that it doesn't always show that the best man won the job, um, but it does give some other people an opportunity. Uh, and it does put some pressure on some other people because they're going to have more of an opportunity and they're going to have to step it up. So this is why the Ravens, they went out. Uh, they didn't do it for injury, but they did it so stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. They brought in Sammy Watkins. They drafted Rashad Bateman. They also drafted Tylen Wallace. And they still have Hollywood and Boykin, Duvernay, and Prochet with their first training camp. And they, of course, been stepping up. Benjamin Victor's there, Deion Cain, even though he's out right now. So they brought in a lot of receivers, and they, they brought in a lot of depth at, at different spots on the, on the uh, team, too. But certainly a wide receiver, they brought in all this depth. So now that depth is definitely going to get tested. Next question came from my guy Swaggy Skrull. He said, Engraven, hope this catches you doing well. At the time of this writing, I don't see you've uploaded a video on the topic, so I figured it's a good question to ask. Michael Thomas, or Slant Man, depending on who you ask, once out of New Orleans. <laughs> Right, Ian Rappaport said the relationship is not good at all and that he wants to trade, or at least that's what the headline said. And the vibe that you get from a player and the team having a relationship that's not so good at all. So you can tell what the question I have is, would this be a sensible trade for Baltimore? No. Um, and uh, before we finish, uh, we'll, before I get into why, let's read the rest of your question. He said he seems like he'd be a good scheme fit, and it doesn't seem like he's out of our reach. Now, that part is true. I agree. He would be a good scheme fit because Michael Thomas, he's a good route runner, very good hands, and he knows how to work the middle of the field. Uh, he knows how to work it. He can, he can do the deep passes and stuff, but he knows how to work them short and intermediate routes. I think that's his specialty for sure. Uh, so he would definitely thrive in this system. But he said, I'm thinking something like a first, a third, and Boykin for Thomas. And if that's lopsided, a little more for the, from the Saints. i gladly give a lot for a superstar, young, proven wide receiver. Uh, however, there's also the question of his behavior with teammates and online. He's a notorious Twitter diva, and he did throw punches at a teammate last year. <laughs> well, we had a teammate throw punches at a teammate last year, and, but that is a former teammate now. But anyway, uh, you think Harbaugh would be able to clean him up, or would it be another Earl Thomas? Oh, okay, so he put that in there. Or would it be another Earl Thomas situation? Looking forward to seeing you cover this. I also really hope my name isn't still Swaggy Squirrel. LOL, I made that name when I was 10. Yes, it is. That's certainly what it came through as. Um... Michael Thomas, I say no. Reason number one, why trade for an injured player? You can't even trade for an injured player because he can't pass his physical. He is going to set the uh, start the season on the PUP list, so that means he's going to be out at least the first six weeks. The trade deadline, I believe, is week eight, um, so he would have to be traded then. Uh, so I, I just this is one that I, I don't see happening at all. Um, Michael Thomas, I will welcome him with open arms to the Ravens, but just he's hurt. So we can't do anything with a Michael Thomas right now. Next question came from my boy Darren M. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is well. Oh, yeah, everything is good. Uh, with the heartbreaking news of Rashad Bateman, I can't help but to think what happened a few years ago when we had doubled down on an offensive position. Uh, Hayden Hurst was a star in the making in our offense. Of course, the injury bug struck, and he lost his reps to the one we know well named Mark Andrews. What are the odds that we have a similar situation with Rashad Bateman and Tylen Wallace? I understand that there are others ahead of Tyler on the depth chart. Okay, that's the first thing that popped in my head, so you already covered it. Uh, but we haven't hit preseason yet, and he hasn't shown his full potential. I would love to hear your feedback on this, and as always, continue to keep it clean. Mm, that is a very, very good question. Very, very good observation. Um, and that would certainly be something. That would be crazy. Um, but with Tylen Wallace, I don't expect him to get the opportunities like that. Because he has so much ahead of him, and he was, what, a fourth-round pick for the Ravens this year? Not saying that he couldn't do it, but I feel like he just has so many people ahead of him. Now, preseason, Hollywood's not going to play in the first preseason game. Boykin is not going to play in the first preseason, preseason game. Um, Rashad Bateman, obviously, isn't playing in the first preseason game. Uh, Deion Kane is probably not going to play in the first preseason game. So, uh, Tyler Wallace could have a shot now to show some stuff. And the more you do... The more you do, the better you do, and that, however much time he gets, 
Like, because he, he's going to be out there for sure. He is definitely going to be out there. So if you can show, like, hey, I, this is what I can do, I got it. Um, whatever opportunity he does get, he just got to make the most of it. Uh, but I, I don't see it being one of those situations uh, simply because the wide receiver position is just is so different for the tight end position um, with the Ravens. It's just is is vastly different because with Hayden Hurst and Mark Andrews, it was just and it was Nick Boyle, of course, too. But those were the two main pass catching tight ends for the Ravens. It was just those two. But with wide receiver, uh, it's not just Rashad Bateman and Tylen Wallace. It's not. It's you got Hollywood, you've got Sammy Watkins, and then you got Devin Duvernay and Prochet who are in their second year. You still got Boykin. You, you got, so you got all that ahead of, well, ahead, because the depth chart not set in stone or anything, but you got all that ahead of Tylen Wallace right now. So I don't think it'll be the same situation, but Tylen Wallace, he still got to make the most of it. Next question came from DeAndrea L. She said, my first question is, do you think Adafe is just that good or are tackles just that bad? <laughs> um... We won't know till we see, man, because that, that dude is fast, man. His, his speed is crazy. So if he got the strength to go along with it, we're going to see in the preseason, that's when we'll start seeing, man. So that, that's what I would wait on, that first preseason game, so we can get a lot of these questions answered. She said, my second question is, what tight end would be harder to replace, Mark Andrews or Nick Boyle? Oof. Um, wow, that, that's a really good question because initially you could just say, oh, Mark Andrews because of the production. But if it's a pass catching tight end and Raven system with Lamar, they're gonna have production. They're gonna have production. Um, and Nick Boyle with his blocking, his blocking is really, really good. And it's again, it's like having an extra offensive lineman out there because he's such a good blocker. He's very strong. Uh, got some good upper body strength. Got good hands too. Underrated hands. Very underrated hands. Um, Wow, that 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 is a tricky one. Uh, what's the next question? She said, "With that being said, what do you who do you think our t third tight end will be? A blocking tight end or a receiving tight end? I will go with receiving. And uh, right now, everything is looking like Josh Oliver. That that's what it's looking like right now. Um, it's not set in stone, but it's looking like him. And hopefully, he solidifies that third spot uh, during the preseason. Next question came from my guy Chris P. He said, "Did team keep it clean? Chris Mix from the West Wing in L.A. Well, at least until September, when I will be in the Cayman Islands on a project for most of the season." Okay, well that should be fun. He said, regarding Miles Boykin, uh, here's the problem the Ravens face, and this may provide you with a different perspective as I've seen you answer this question several times. Miles Boykin is a very talented football player. The Ravens are trying to find a way to keep him as they are only going to keep six wideouts on the team. They will most likely be Hollywood, Sammy Watkins, Rashad Bateman, Tylen Wallace, Devin Duvernay, and James Prochet. He has been balling during training camp. That will make Miles Boykin the odd man out. Here's the problem. If the Ravens put Miles Boykin on the practice squad, he will be taken by another team just as Darren Waller was. Remember, Waller wasn't a free agent. He was on the practice squad. Any team can claim a player from other, another team's practice squad if they have a need at that position. John Gruden was practically bragging about stealing him from the Ravens. So the question isn't whether Miles Boykin can play tight end. He has the height, and if he adds another 20, 30 pounds of muscle, he will be the correct weight for a tight end, and he's a good blocker. The question is, is Miles Boykin a better football player then the other tight ends the Ravens are carrying outside of Mark Andrews and Nick Boyle. If they decide he is, then I believe Miles Boykin becomes a tight end and they can use him as a flex tight end slash wide receiver. That's a perspective the Ravens may be talking. Cheers, Chris Mix. P.S. Since a group of Ravens is called a conspiracy, I'll be starting a Cayman conspiracy during my absence from the West Wing this year. A group of Ravens is also called an unkindness or a treachery. Since Justin Houston is now a Raven, the defense should be dubbed the unkindness. Uh, since my questions are a bit wordy as they are packed with establishing data, here's the short version. <laughs> if Miles Boykin is a better player than any of the tight ends after Mark Andrews and Nick Boyle, should the Ravens retain him as a tight end rather than risking him being poached by another team? Should he be placed on a practice squad? What a perfect way to summarize all of that, man. Wow. Um, wow. That... This was great. I love the breakdown. I love how you put everything. I I, I loved it. Um, this is this is just great. Um, with Miles Boykin though, it's 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 still the same thing for me. Um, do I think he could play tight end? He could possibly, but first it, it starts up here. That's where it starts. The mental part. The mental part is the thing that I, I think is really holding him back the most. Or well, that's what's been holding him back the most. I can't say right now. Um. 
so they could do a little thing where they use him as like yeah like you said a little flex tight end and whatnot um slash wide receiver to where he has like multiple roles so they will get to keep their guy um and they could even possibly list him as a tight end they could even what they could do they could either keep an extra receiver or have him listed as a tight end and roll with four of them so if because that would allow you to keep him on the roster. That would allow you to have another good special teams guy, too. That would allow you to have another receiver. Um, that would allow you to have another tight end. That would allow you to uh, be able to just use him as a weapon while you really try to figure out what's best for Miles Boykin and how he best fits these Ravens and how you can really, really just really use him to the best of his ability. Now, me, honestly, I think that, again, Ravens... With receivers that are over 6'3", six, 6'4", six, they just, they get lost. They get lost. Ravens just don't know what to do. I think if Miles Boykin was on another team, oof, he would be going crazy. I think he would have, he has the potential to go crazy on the field in a good way. Um, so, and it's, because it's not like Ravens got, Ravens are a wide receiver factory or anything like that. No, they have a terrible track record when it comes to their development of wide receivers. Um, so with Miles Boykin, we're going to see what they end up doing. Hopefully he doesn't fall on the wrong side of that track record, but it's just going to be about patience from this point and just really uh, seeing how much patience the Ravens have with him, um, and, and just how this whole thing works out. Shout out to Graven.